They know that the body is a biological computer. It can be manipulated as computers can be manipulated to process information in a different way. Control the information that is processed. That's the censorship. But you go to the next level and you are literally changing the way the brain processes information from within. One of the great manipulative techniques is to sell the idea of inevitability. If, right. if you think something's inevitable, then you move from not having it to, well, how can we mitigate its impact? And, and that's the soft sell. We have this global cult, a, a network, a global network of secret societies that is driving the direction of human society way beyond presidents. What I started to realize is that this reality is actually a simulation. It's a incredibly advanced version of a virtual reality game. This is definitely an interview that I've been looking forward to and working on getting for, for years because I've been listening to you and watching you on YouTube, at least whatever they keep up, of course, for, for so long. You've been in, engulfed in this truth revealing for decades and decades and way before we ever could have a conversation that included even the word consciousness. I, I'm, I'm honored to have this time. And I think I just want to kind of start off by asking you if, you know, anything shocks you anymore. Uh, no, <laughs> no, nothing shocks me um, in the sense that the, the more you, uh, the more we grasp um, the scale of the infinite reality that we are part of we're only seeing a smear of it i mean i mean even a smear is to, doesn't uh, describe it really and that infinity is infinite possibility so anything is possible uh, and uh, nothing nothing surprises me anymore and uh, another reason it doesn't surprise me is that when i started out uh, 35 years ago there was hardly anybody um, talking about this stuff there were just a few disparate individuals the challenge was that this dystopia journey called a conspiracy, which is what it is, was under the radar largely uh, in the sense of you, you had to, you know, really go di digging to, to uncover it and where the world was being taken. Uh, but of course, particularly since, uh, quote, COVID, the COVID hoax, we've had um, uh, it more and more put in our face. Yeah. And and I think that what is shocking a lot of people who haven't been on this journey uh, for uh, 35 years is is the scale of deceit that um, was controlling their lives before, uh, because uh, so many people have said to me in the last few years, it's so obvious. Why didn't I see it before? Well, there's a reason. There's a reason for that. There's many reasons for that. But one of them is well, it was it was operating under the radar, mm -hmm. and now it's uh, particularly well. What happened with COVID, as I said at the time, is that uh, this has entered the room uh, where we can see it. And although still lots of people just buy the nonsense, um, a heck of a lot more than ever did before do not. Uh, but uh, my concern has been, particularly since uh, the, the, the COVID uh, period, um, is that what we call um, alternative, the alternative media, that which, uh, that part of it, because I mean, the, the alternative media has got absolutely fantastic people in it, but that core that attracts all the algorithmic support and all the funding, I mean, we've, we've had stories running the, yesterday and today about some of the unbelievable funding that some of these people get. It, it's created uh, what I call a barricade, a barricade around this expansion. Uh, we, we go through a series of awakenings, um, which I think are different levels of deprogramming, actually, what we call awakening. The first one is to realize that the world's not controlled by the people we thought it was, which is presidents, prime ministers and such like. AG1 is a foundational nutritional supplement that delivers daily nutrition through gut health support and is backed by multiple research studies so you can trust what you're putting in your body. I trust AG1 because unlike so many products, their entire formula is backed by research studies, not just the ingredients. 
Over 14 years, AG1 has been focused on innovation with a trusted, nutrient-dense blend that's the perfect complement to my diet. I can trust their research and how they're validating the product working in the body. AG1 has been third-party tested for safety for years and is trusted by experts and medical professionals, giving you one less thing to research. They're posting results online from their studies, and it's interesting to see how many of the study participants had the same feelings of energy, focus, supported digestion, all from using AG1. For example, at 30 days, 80% of the people in the research study noticed less gas and bloating. 97% of the people in a research study felt more energy. If there's one product I trust to support my whole body health, it's AG1. And that's why I've partnered with them for so long. It's easy and satisfying to start your journey with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase at drinkag1.com slash pretty intense. That's drinkag1.com slash pretty intense. Check it out. Uh, but if, if you stop there and the awakening doesn't go on, the deprogramming doesn't go on so that you, you, you see more and more and more of the scale of human control, uh, which takes you not only into the scale of it, it also takes you into those areas where the answers lie. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I perceive to be a hijack of the alternative media since COVID, uh, more and more blatant now, um, has put this barricade around it. And so the focus of attention on <clears throat> what is the conspiracy is uh, Trump or Harris, basically. Um, Republicans or Democrats, um, and 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 whatever two parties or three parties you have in other countries, this focus of attention on politics, like Trump is the savior, we've got to get Trump in. Um, well, even if Trump is the savior, I don't think he is for a second. What happens in four years' time <laughs> when someone else comes in? I mean, you're not getting to the core of um, what's going on. So what's going on is just going to continue. There's nothing that shocks me anymore, but I have been um, not shocked, deeply disappointed by the way the alternative media has focused its attention on, on um, the left-right puppet show, because that's a diversion. Mm. It's not the answer, it's a diversion. And, and so many people are currently, as we go up to this election, are being diverted from what they need to know to what they're told to know. Well, before we started and and we just chatted and I asked you if you I, I said that I wanted to mention the the election and whether or not our president was going to make a difference. And you said no. And then, then of course, that leads into if they don't make a difference, which it's very, potentially a very logical answer, given the fact that the the president that we have right now isn't even really being a president and yet the country's carrying on, who is running the show then? Well, that tells you, doesn't it? That tells you. The, the Biden period um, tells you um, you've had someone who's uh, at, at least, shall we say, uh, psychologically challenged, um, and yet um, the, the country's have got, uh, has gone on, the uh, decisions have been made, mm. and it, clearly he's not been making them. Mm. Now all probably that for the whole time, probably for nearly nearly oh, the yes. whole term, really. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, there was a reason why they 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 kept him in the bunker and kept him away from uh, just as they are with uh, Kamala Harris. And they, Trump was president when COVID happened, so if he was able to hold those those kinds of things back, then that's also not possible either. That that occurred while he was president. So yeah, who who's well, this, really this, running the yeah. show? Yeah, there's a few things come out of that. First of all, is uh, that um, clearly in the Biden period, um, he's not been running the country. I mean, just go back a bit further. Go back to boy George Bush at the time of the invasion of Iraq. Mm, mm. The man hardly had a, a you know a, a, a brain cell on active duty. I mean, you just look at it. He, and and the pe the person who was running uh, the country at the time of boy George Bush was Dick Cheney. Uh, the vice president, one step back, that's where you usually find the power uh, rather than the pe person absolutely up front. And Dick Cheney was a uh, a cohort, uh, a, 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 I have to say it, an absolute evil cohort of another evil uh, guy 
called Father George Bush. So mm -hmm. this is not new. You keep you go back, you know, back and back and back. You're you're seeing this same um, this same theme right. of something in the background always being there. That's the thing to remember. Yeah. See, because this is a um, a conspiracy uh, to uh, create total uh, global human control. And it doesn't come in and stop when another party comes in. It's 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 constant. It's it's right. been going on literally in our perception of time anyway for thousands of years, and it's just now reaching its its kind of end game. Mm. Um, and, and so, um, obviously, throughout this whole period, there's been a common theme, a common coordinating force. Where well, you go really uh, way back into the non-human uh, to, to find the source of that. But at, at, the, at the level of um, of presidents and prime ministers, it's, it's what people call the deep state. Mm -hmm. The deep state um, it has uh, a, uh, a network that operates within countries, uh, and therefore, no matter who's in power, that's in power. Uh, but... Um, there's also a ne the next level of the deep state and the next level, the next level, until you've got what I call the global cult that's uh, orchestrating the whole direction of, of uh, global human society. So you've got that confirmed that presidents don't run the show. What they're trying to do is to take our power, um, first of all, to convince us we have none. You're just little me. You've got no power. You've got to look up to authority and experts to tell you what to think, to convince us, first of all, we have no power. But then to get us to give away the power we do actually have right. to any other source, any source that they can convince us to give it away for, uh, to. And that's the point of politics. Politics is there to uh, get you to give your power away in in uh, American terms to an individual. In fact, even, even that in UK these days, to an individual. And then say, you do it for me for the next four years. And then they go and, 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 and uh, run your life and dictate your life for the next four years. And then what happens is you have another election and you think, well, I didn't like him, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vote for them which is always why it keeps going back and forth in, in, a, in a general rhythm. Exactly. And, and, and then the same process repeats. Stress is a common factor that affects everyone in today's fast-paced world, leading to various issues. What if the answer to a better stress response is in a key nutrient? I'm talking about magnesium. Actually, I'm specifically talking about Magnesium Breakthrough by Bioptimizers. This one-of-a-kind product is designed to reverse low levels of magnesium, which could be leading to a multitude of other health problems. What sets Magnesium Breakthrough apart is its ability to support healthy levels of stress hormones like cortisol, a better balanced stress response in your nervous and hormone systems, and healthy production of GABA, the relaxing neurotransmitter, leading to a more peaceful and better flow state. That's why I recommend Magnesium Breakthrough by Bioptimizers. It's the only organic full-spectrum magnesium supplement that includes seven unique forms of magnesium for stress resilience and better sleep all in one bottle. Simply go to bioptimizers.com slash pretty intense. In addition to the discount you get by using promo code pretty intense, there are always amazing gifts with purchase. Go now to bioptimizers.com slash pretty intense and get your magnesium breakthrough and find out this month's gift with purchase. And, and all the time you've got tens and tens and tens of millions of people who are voting for, say, Trump, who, if they simply cease to cooperate with their own enslavement, like 70 odd million apparently voted for him, I was reading then the system couldn't function uh, uh, could, because that would be people uh, collectively taking their power and expressing it in non-cooperation with um, their own enslavement. But instead, you, you give this power away at elections to an individual, and that individual is controlled by the same force that controls the individual he was um, campaigning against in the election. And they then play out the cult agenda. Now, you've got two parties in America. 
you have different natural constituencies. So the two parties have to use different rhetoric to keep those constituencies on board. They, they have to uh, move at, at, at slower paces and convince their uh, natural base of the same thing, but in a different way. If you look at the so-called left, it's not the left that I knew. I, I grew up in the, the left in politics in, in Britain. That was, that was the household I, I grew up in. Um, it, I, Definitely I, not the same as it used to be. None of it. No, I completely reject the the the, the puppet show of left and right, and it's all a, a diversion and a nonsense. But um, you're absolutely right. The the so called left is not the left that was. Uh, a lot of the people they used to call um, left, they now call right wing. <laughs> kind of funny uh, because it's moved so much. So that that's really uh, if you're looking at the the natural uh, Democrat base. That's pretty much a pushover. So you can go for the hard sell with that. Uh, but with the, 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 the others, um, like the Trump supporters, uh, they don't want what the wokers will accept and, and often demand. Um, so you have to get to the same end, to the same outcome, mm. through another means. I'll give you a, a great example of what I mean by that. The idea, the, the plan, and it's getting closer every day, is to connect artificial intelligence to the human brain so that artificial intelligence becomes the human mind. I, I go into this in some detail in my new book, The Reveal, uh, because it's all connected to this uh, uh, COVID fake vaccine, uh, as, as well as the other things that are happening all around us all the time. That's the outcome they want. Why? Because up to this point, they've had to manipulate information and control information as best they can to dictate the perception of the population. Because you're dealing with a, a compared with 8 billion people, in full knowledge of what they're doing, you're dealing with a tiny number of people by comparison. You're not going to be able to control the population physically until you get AI connected and then you tell the population what they're going to think and how they're going to react and how they're going to behave. And therefore, you are, in that sense, controlling them physically. But before that, you have to control their perception because from perception comes behavior. And uh, if you want people to behave the way you want, you've got to get them to perceive the way you want. That's where all the censorship comes in. Um, it's controlling the information that people receive so that they come to the conclusions you want them to. The, uh, the next stage, this AI stage, is to go beyond that uh, and, and literally give people their perceptions direct. So you've got two groups. I mean, the, almost the, like almost like an inception, almost like you don't have to like they're going to implant it in a way. Get into as we go along the means through which um, I'm, I'm saying in the reveal that they're, 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 they're not just planning to do it. They are doing it now. Uh, but so the outcome is that that's what they want. So you've got two groups of people in theme at least, a, a woke or democratic type uh, mentality that will, will go with this. And, and so you can give them the hard sell through people like uh, Klaus Schwab at the World Economic Forum, Bill Gates, uh, Ray Kurzweil at, uh, at Google, who's talking about, and, and did a long time ago now, years ago, talked about the uh, year two, uh, tw 2030, when um, AI would be connected to the human brain. And, and in his words, from, from that moment of connection, um, AI would do more and more of human thinking until human thinking is negligible and actually deleted. So, so that's the hard sell. But, but then you've got all these people, tens of millions of them in America and, and, and more and more around the world, who don't want that. They don't want this whole AI-controlled dystopian system. They've seen in China what happens with the social credit system and all that, where it's it's, it's total control. All you have to do is watch Black Mirror and yeah. all this stuff. It's very well, scary. I've, I've watched quite a few of those. Yeah. And um, yeah, they, they are looking at um, a, a dystopian world that this is, uh, this is planned to be. And we're going there uh, faster and faster all the time. So how do you deal with that um, vast number of people in America alone who don't want what your what your agenda is? Well, enter Elon Musk. Yeah, I was, I was hoping you would mention him because he's a very like confusing character in his 
and his efforts and what he's developed and 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 whether or not he really is has human interest at heart or not. And 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 honestly, I don't know if you saw the recent interview about him talking about his son and losing his son to changing genders, but like it sounds like maybe there's a shift within him. But I'm very curious what you think about Elon. There's no shift in 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 what I'm observing, but there is enormous deceit going on by elon well he's being played by by those that control him i mean we we can get into uh the fact that uh his companies survive like spacex survives but mm-hmm. from contracts from nasa and and uh, the pentagon government contracts and others like um um neuralink the the brain chip uh, company which is actually way back from the cutting edge by the way we might get into that but he um, was involved in chat GPT too originally. And then when it was sort of run in a way that he didn't like, he got out of that. So it's, it's interesting. And then he gets into Grok. You see, th- you see, th- this is one of the, one of the points that people I think need to need to grasp about the whole AI arena. You, you've got to have fake competition and fake rivalry. It might not be fake absolutely at the, the point of, of delivery, but it's fake in the bigger picture. Mm. So, okay, so chat GPT. Oh, well, that's left wing. That is, that's manipulating. So we're going to have Grok and we're going to have this Google version and we're going to have this Amazon version. But, but, but what I keep saying this, what is the outcome of all of them? This AI information system takes over information. Mm -hmm. We're now having people in the alternative media uh, alternative in quotes who are interviewing chat gpt and, right. and 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 you go on the internet and, and you're being offered all these ai systems to to give you information right but it so so you can have your fake rivalry oh, oh musk what is he saying about sam altman what's he saying about musk but actually look at the outcome and the outcome is that these things are taking over because from a from a, a, a cult, global cult point of view, this global network of secret societies I talk about, they control Musk, they control Altman, they control ChatGPT, they control Grok, they control all of them. It, but, but they're designed for a particular audience because you're trying to pull them in. And the hardest ones to pull in are those that don't want what you want to impose. And so... I've been tra- tracking Elon Musk long, long before he um, he uh, purchased Twitter. Actually, look at the number of people that uh, around the world, including the Saudis, that own Twitter. You wonder how how uh, uh, how much their commitment is to free speech uh, in Qatar and places like that that are involved in uh, uh, Twitter ownership. Anyway, so and uh, in that pre-Twitter period. There were people in the alternative media who were calling Musk out because you've only got to look at his companies to see that they're serving the agenda in many and various ways, SpaceX massively. And we can we can get into that when we come into this AI hive mind uh, situation that I've been talking about. Uh, But that all stopped the moment he bought Twitter X and started letting a few people back on. It was like he's, he's suddenly become a god of right. this um, uh, alternative media, which is not alternative at all. It's just right wing politics. That's what it's uh, solidified into, coagulated into. Now he gets a free ride. And suddenly, uh, you'll notice a few weeks ago, Musk suddenly became incredibly overtly political, into party political. Started right. Well, the Trump, Trump interview, the Trump you know, interview on X was. Yeah, in big a launching re- pad for that. You know, in a really, really uh, intense way, he's doing it all the time now, mm. and he's been offered a job and accepted it in a Trump right. administration. Right? What's happening? You're looking at the soft sell to the AI human to convince that big constituency that will be supporting Trump. What is what is Musk saying? He's saying that. Um, AI is inevitable. Its development is inevitable. It's not. It's the result of choices. But um, he's saying it's inevitable. 
And therefore, it could be the end of humanity. He's been saying that for a long time. OK, um, well, first of all, why do you keep bringing out more and more AI? But he's, um, he then uh, says that to overcome AI um, making humans obsolete, humans must be fused with AI uh, and, and uh, fused with artificial intelligence. So let's have a look at that. OK, hard cell, fuse humans with artificial intelligence, hive mind. Uh, soft cell, well, you know, it, 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 it could be dangerous. It could be the end of humanity. But, uh, you know, we, if we're going to survive, we've got to fuse humans with artificial intelligence. Um, and and, and th- because they, they've built uh, Musk into this um, uh, free speech hero, he's not, let me come to that in a second, um, he uh, is, is given a free ride on all this. And people say, oh, yeah, you can trust Elon. Well, you can't. Do you know, um, and these are official figures, the pre-Musk uh, Twitter was uh, taking down content 50% of the time hmm. when governments and authorities and courts demanded it. Under Musk Twitter X, that content is taken down 80% of the time. And what this, this, see, it's all a perceptual game. So what's happening is you'll pick a fight with a country like Brazil at the moment, Right. And people will go, see, he's standing up for free speech. But quietly in the background, he's taking down content uh, uh, all the time. Um, he, he had a spat, uh, another, oh, free, look, he's standing up for free speech. He had a spat with the Australian government. And what the Australian government uh, said to him is, we want this, the video of this, um, this, this, this preacher who was stabbed on video to um to be taken down and he took it down in australia immediately but they said no we want it taken down worldwide and he said i'm not going to take it down worldwide and that was another spat or he's standing up for free speech but what it turns out is that he has taken down globally content demanded by the australian government before in the six months to um march of this year uh, twitter x took down forty thousand pieces of content demanded by um, the EU globally, not just in the EU, globally. So there's a story going on in the background quietly, and there's a story going on for public consumption. And uh, we, we've really uh, got to start um, realizing that um, there's a PSYOP going on here. And uh, it's, it's all right saying, you know, uh, or free speech. Well, hold on a minute. Let's just talk about that. What's what's happening? And, and, and YouTube have just started moving into this arena. Interestingly, it's like it's the new censorship. Fewer people are outright banned. But if you're saying the wrong thing, then no one ever sees it or virtually no 100%. one. ever sees. So much shadow banning. Shadow banning. Mm-hmm. So um, this is this is actually being articulated by Linda Yaccarino, who is the CEO of Twitter X and a close associate of the World Economic Forum and Klaus Schwab. That's just the person you want to pick, isn't it, Elon? Um, And she's talked about free speech, but not reach. Speech, but not reach. Yeah, that's a better way to hide it. Because if you're actually fully shut down, you can say that will get out somehow. But if you don't realize that it's not reaching people, you don't really say anything. Exactly. You know, the number of people I've got 663,000 followers of my Twitter X page. And the number of times people say, I never see your post, mate. Oh, yeah. What? Same for me. I mean, I had a friend reach, you know, say something not long ago that was like, I realized I hadn't seen your stuff in a while. And sure enough, you've been shadow banned. And I was like, huh. That's exactly that's exactly what's going on and, and uh she talks about lawful but awful mm. so what who, who decides if something's well it's lawful but who decides if it's awful well they do and so what what you've seen I, i've watched this i mean you know i'm i'm on the case every waking minute i've watched this happen the, this center of the alternative media that's that's created this uh, barricade of myopic focus on only politics they get Massive um, algorithmic support and others, wonderful people who are um, on the outside uh, of that barricade brigade and are open to, to uh, a, a greater sense of what's going on. They don't get that support. 
Uh, and of course, the person that gets most algorithmic support on Twitter X is Musk. And he's posting like machine gun fire, which means he's he's obviously not doing them all, say the least. You're absolutely right. There's a lot of postings happening, and um, and he's always at the top of your feed. Yeah, but but what you said, yeah, exactly. But this is this is the point. He's the kingmaker. You see, I talk about this in the in the reveal. He's the kingmaker because if he reposts something by someone, automatically the algorithms will give that someone. In tens of millions of views sometimes. Um, yeah. And so by, by targeting who he reposts, he's manipulating um, the, um, the information that, that people receive and yeah, your algorithm. attention on particular people. And, you know, I, I, I said in a, in a post recently, uh, react, re responding to something that he posted, obviously he didn't get many uh, views compared with him, uh, to say the least, because it's shadow banned. But um, anything you say about him that's negative is shadow banned. But I, I was pointing out, he was he was saying, oh, you know, the, the 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 when this Zuckerberg thing broke, he said, oh yeah, Zuckerberg, he was uh, manipulating the election by you know through Facebook and all this stuff. He admitted and, it, right? That was yeah. But, but, well, yeah. But then you say, why is he just admitted it? You know, but but uh, which is another story. But the the point I made was, well, hold on, mate, Mister Musk, but you're manipulating this election. Because um, you are uh, favoring massively on X, Donald Trump. Um, I mean, I, 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 I've got no brief for <laughs> Kamala Harris. <laughs> I mean, I mean, oh, me, me. God, are you kidding? Uh, I've got no brief for Trump either, but I've got a brief for either of them. But, but if, you're, if you're taking this literally and you're taking this balance literally, then he's using X to support Trump. And it, the algorithms are supporting Trump. Mm. He, he posts negatively about Harris. He posts positively all the time about Trump. Mm. Now he's saying, well, we, it, it, you know, the, America's finished without Trump coming in and all this. What about this? Hey, what about this? How about this for a, an idea that we just let people post? The algorithms are equal. And no one's shadow banned, no one's boosted, and people just make their minds up what they want to believe on the basis of what they see. How about that for a, for a, a, an idea? It's way too simple and not nearly man manipulative enough. No, it's not. They're not interested in that because they have their their team to su support, and um, so uh, this is what we're we're we're, we're, we're dealing with, and. You know, if we stay with Musk for a second, and I could talk about him for hours, really, uh, given the research I've done on him, but um, he's got these companies, and one of them is SpaceX. And uh, if you look at the background to SpaceX, um, he uh, went on a um, a trip to Russia with a uh, CIA operative called Michael Griffin. And and bizarre as it may sound, um, the idea was to buy. Uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles from the Russians. Uh, it, the, the deal didn't work out. And on the way back, um, Musk is uh, reported uh, by Griffin to have said that he's going to start SpaceX. And he offered um, Griffin, the CIA guy, um, the, um, uh, the, a major job in the company. But instead of that, Griffin was offered a job, which he took, has head of InQtel. InQtel is the um, CIA's uh, technological development arm. It seed funds companies and startups to produce technology that, that benefit the CIA and its surveillance and control systems, right? InQtel. Michael Griffin later moved from InQtel to become head of NASA. And at that point, NASA started giving big contracts to Musk and SpaceX, which have gone on ever since. Right. And Trump um, has endorsed the space mission for NASA and everything, too. So there's yeah. another link there. Well, this is the thing, you see. If you, if you look at the Trump thing, the number of people in this AI um, arena that are pushing this AI uh, agenda that have actually um, formed around Trump. I mean, I, the, the, I've, I've been... Uh, blocked by so many people on Twitter of, of many various kinds for um, for questioning. But uh, one of them is a guy called Mark Andreessen. 
who's a, a multi-billionaire kind of um, internet Silicon Valley AI guy, who I've, I mentioned him in the book, but I've never mentioned him on Twitter, but he just, he just banned me. And interestingly, he, he blocked me, but interestingly, he blocked me at the time that J.D. Vance was being um, uh, made the running mate of, of, of yeah. Trump. And I was pointing out a few things about J.D. Vance at the time. Hmm. Um, he is a business associate of a guy called Peter Thiel. Mm -hmm. Peter Thiel um, is a co-founder of Palantir. Palantir produces surveillance and control technology for the Pentagon, for the intelligence community in America and worldwide. Uh, um, and he's on the steering committee of the Bilderberg Group this globalist organization. And he's a business uh, partner and associate of J.D. Vance. And he funded J.D. Vance's political career when he became a, a, a senator. Hmm. And when they were uh, playing around with names, uh, who's going to be uh, Trump's running mate, and they listed the names, and one of them was J.D. Vance, I said, it's going to be him. <laughs> it, it was obvious because- it Might have uh, been the only one, because I don't feel like his name was on the radar. <laughs> Yeah, well, Peter Thiel um, was um, uh, on the uh, transition team for Trump when he when he won the election in 2016. So uh, all these people are connected. Uh, Peter Thiel is part of the um, so-called uh, PayPal mafia, of which uh, Elon Musk is a part. He's, he's a, 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 an old associate of Elon PayPal, Musk. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so uh, you, you then look at another co-founder of Palantir providing uh, technology for the intelligence community and and, uh, and what have you, the Pentagon. And he's on the steering committee of the Bilderberg Group alongside um, alongside Peter Thiel. So you've got these people who are, are, are central players in a blatantly globalist organization started in 1954 at the Bilderberg Hotel in uh, Oosterbeek, Holland. That's why it, it got the name it did. Um, but But they're funding and supporting people who on the surface are anti-globalist. So what you've got, again, we come back to this, you've got the hard sell, easy pushback, no pushback, and you've got the soft sell, and the soft sellers are everywhere uh, around Trump for this, this whole AI agenda. So if we go back again to um, SpaceX, SpaceX is putting up, because uh, of this um, system they call Starlink, um, they're putting up low orbit satellites by the tens of thousands. Really? The Federal Communications Commission in America has given SpaceX permission already to put up tens of thousands uh, of these low orbit satellites beaming this uh, electromagnetic field at the Earth. Because um, this, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm saying is going on. The hive mind, and, th and, and this is uh, why I mentioned earlier that what he's doing with Neuralink is, um, is, is the Stone Age compared with what's possible. And uh, in many ways, what uh, Musk's role is, is not just to produce technology that's cutting edge. Very uh, rare that he does that, actually, compared with what's in the underground bases and the secret projects. Mm -hmm. But it's to sell a concept. So he's selling the concept of connecting um, electronic systems, computer systems and AI to the human brain, because the, the, the real way it's being done is this. And, and I've seen some, uh, some study papers uh, this very day that's, that's actually another confirmation of it. And that is that uh, you've got a, a global population and you want to control them with a hive mind that is centrally controllable. So you need um, them to individually receive that hive mind, and you need a vehicle to transmit uh, directions, thoughts, perceptions collectively mm. to, to, to those receivers. So the vehicle is what they call the cloud. This is what Kurzweil at Google has been talking about in terms of the 
um, AI connection to the human brain. He's talking about you know, being connecting humans to the cloud. Sure. I mean, I've had a I've had a service on my phone for a decade now that sends a frequency that helps you get to a higher frequency because of the EMFs and everything that come off the phone. So while we talk, you're talking about getting plugged into AI, they can affect us from a frequency standpoint without an actual transmitter, like inside of the body. So, I mean, I, I don't know if you ever saw the show Westworld, but the end of that ended with, you know, showing how they can literally control the masses with frequency and the, the tower that's doing it is invisible to the naked eye unless you get, unless you thin that veil enough or you change your frequency to be able to see. And you're like, there it is. Exactly. And they're, they're the crazy ones. Exactly. And and that's that's the, the whole basis of it. So the cloud mm. is the vehicle, the electromagnetic cloud is the vehicle for um, delivering these frequencies. And um, this is why they have tried so hard to um, have the uh, fake COVID vaccine, uh, which is not a vaccine by any previous criteria, uh, infused into every human, uh, preferably multiple times. Well, alongside of that came 5G, which was definitely a, a suspicion on what was implanted inside the body that could then be activated by 5G. Well, that, that's the point, you see. I mean, you know, during the, the COVID lockdowns, they said only essential work. Well, essential work included putting 5G towers all over the place. Uh, and while people were, were were locked away in their homes, they were doing it without any challenge. What are you doing? What are you doing? And you come out and suddenly there's these 5G towers. Uh, uh, but not that I uh, 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 was locked away in my home. I wouldn't have it. I went out whenever I wanted to. Uh, but the, um, the, the point is these two are absolutely connected. So you can... Um, generate this cloud from um from towers in urban areas and towns and cities yeah you can but if you're going to hit every inch of the planet which is what the game is you've got to do it from space and that's what the low orbit satellites are all about i mean spacex is by by far the leader in doing it but there are others um as well and and the more they put up and you'll see musk bragging about uh, uh more of these satellites have gone up um on on twitter x uh, and and so uh that's the vehicle through which they want to uh, deliver these frequencies of perceptual manipulation and control but the 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 fake covid um jab and now they're moving other uh, vaccines to that system on purpose is um with mm. this in mind mm. just adding you're saying adding ingredients or adding things into that that yeah. vaccine what's been found and i i've, I've studied this a lot uh you know uh, i was contacted by a group called la quinta columna in uh, spain that um was on the case of what's in the fake vials vaccine vials from the from the very early days and um i've I've, I've seen the work of other people too, um, who've looked at blood um, of uh, not just fake vaccinated people, or that obviously that's worse, but also non-vaccinated people who are getting it from other sources, uh, which I'll, I'll come to. They are seeing under very, very powerful microscopes, electron microscopes, electron microscopes rather, self-replicating nanotechnology that in their words appears to have a form of consciousness to to form these systems that that are building in the blood a significant number of people their bodies won't be able to cope with that uh transition and uh, and and they're, they're the people who died and uh and and had their health destroyed for life mm. and then others will 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 transition a little bit more easily but the idea is that these self-replicating systems in the body uh, are the receivers of the frequency information coming through the cloud now what's fascinating in in relation to this and uh, was identified by la quinta columna uh, quite a few years ago now um, is a substance in the vials um, known as graphene oxide. Now, graphene oxide um, is also, it, it, whistleblowers have, uh, have said, in chemtrails, 
So there are other so and it, and it's in many other things, and so there are many other sources of it. But this infusion through the the COVID fake vaccine is uh, uh, the major one up to this point. Uh, and uh, graphene oxide um, is a superconductor of electricity. So um, when you think that the brain processes information electrically and communicates with the body and the body with it um, electrically. If you can intervene in that process, you're already changing the perceptions of, the, of, uh, of, of people uh, and the way they process information. But it's also, graphene oxide, a amplifier of electromagnetism in the body. So if you are um, in contact with an electromagnetic field, the impact of that field on the body uh, will be much greater with um, graphene oxide inside you than if you didn't. Uh, and, and this is the connection that they're working on. And interestingly, you know, um, th this neural link of Musk, uh, where they take a bit of the skull away and then put wires on the brain and stuff, it, it's the Stone Age, but it's selling a concept. And interestingly, he was asked uh, in an interview, uh, but how many people are going to want to have a bit of their skull taken away for this stuff? Um, and he said, oh, well, you might not have to do it that way. You you could do it through the vein. Yeah, like like they are with the COVID uh, fake vaccine. I mean, they uh, put vaccines in food now. They found a way to put the, put it in lettuce and tomatoes. and Exactly. And, and the thing is that... Um, what happens when they don't have to divulge it when they, when they don't have to disclose it within the within the packaging like what happens when that happens yeah well um you know we we we've been consuming uh, a, an enormous amount of absolute crap for a very long time but we've seen nothing yet with with the the scale of technological manipulation that we're seeing now because this is the this is the point I, i've been calling the body a biological computer since the 1990s People think bio, uh, biological means natural, not necessarily. And I'll tell you what, what these people um, see biological as. They see it as a form of technology. And uh, if you look at um, papers by Moderna talking about their uh, fake vaccine, they describe uh, the body and they describe um, their uh, the fake vaccine as like an operating system. Uh, they, they know that the body is a biological computer. And they treat it as such. And, and a, 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 as a, a biological computer, it can be manipulated as computers can be manipulated to process information in a different way. And what you can do is <clears throat> control the information that is processed. That's the censorship and where we, uh, we are now and where we've been. But you go to the next level. And you are literally changing the way the brain processes information from within uh, and indeed from without through this cloud. So th this is where it's going. And, mm -hmm. and the reason I, I spend so much time calling out Musk is because he's fundamental in this sales pitch mm -hmm. to those that actually don't want this. Wow. But, but, what, but what, this is the thing. This, one of the great manipulative um, techniques is to sell the idea of inevitability. Because um, if, right. if you think something's inevitable, then you move from not having it to, well, how can we mitigate its impact? Sure. Right? And mm -hmm. so that's that's where uh, uh, Musk and this, this crowd uh, around uh, Peter Thiel are going, to, to, to sell the idea it's inevitable and therefore we've got to mitigate its impact. And, and that's the soft sell to mm. the same end. Do you think that we then are here to evolve? Because the question would be then, if you do, maybe we're enough. Maybe maybe our consciousness and our potential that is somewhat largely untapped, maybe there's nothing to do. Maybe the evolution, maybe there's nothing to do. But if we are here to evolve, if we are here to get off planet, to be able to repopulate somewhere else, what happens? I mean, you know, I've spoken to Randall Carlson and other people who talk about how how like how many things are coming at this planet from asteroids to destroy us. Like the inevitability of destruction is there. So then 
how do we evolve? What is that next step? Because I think this stuff is frightening. I think that I think consciousness is the is the is the pure potentiality, and that when you tap into a system, you are now limited by only the system, which doesn't tap into the field of potentiality. So I'm on board with that. But what is the next step? How do we evolve as humans if that is our goal? Where do we go? What do we do? What do we become? Well, we've already gone into levels that the mainstream alternative media doesn't uh, deal right, with very sure. much. But let's now go into levels it doesn't deal with at all. <laughs> um, the, the levels where the answers lie, as well as the true scale of human control. Are we here to evolve? No, it's a trap. Um, let's look at what the I is. What we're led to believe and encouraged to believe is that the human body and the labels of the human body is the I. Mm -hmm. um, this is who I am. No, it's what you're experiencing. Mm -hmm. What you are is consciousness, the having that experience. Yeah. Um, but why are you having the experience? Look around the world. Uh, anyone think that, that humans are evolving? Really? Some are because they've become conscious beyond the program. But most people are still stuck in the program. Look through known human history and, 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 and see the, the constant common themes that never change. Right. Like the vast majority look to uh, the min minority authority to tell them what to do and tell like them what to do. Like an ancient Rome, Rome, the mob, you know? It's same, but it's the same thing. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, you know, it may it may have a different uh, historical setting, and it may have different rhetoric, but it's the same story. And and actually, that goes on even when we leave this realm, as I'm, I'll, I'll come to. So, my approach um, right all the way through this thirty five years has been to know that there's one thing that is unquestionable. And that is whatever we think we know at any point, there's always more to know. So you're constantly asking, OK, I, I, I think I get this. So what don't I know? And what don't I know? And what don't I know? And what that does is drive you deeper and deeper and deeper in the rabbit hole instead of walking around the outer rim of the rabbit hole and calling it sussing the conspiracy. Not even started. Where, where that's taken me. It took me from around the mid 90s, the mid 1990s, to an understanding, and this is all through um, research and experience that, is, that I had, and people I met, and books that I, I, I read, yes, and documents that I saw. Uh, multiple um, sources um, pointing in the same direction. We have this global cult, a, a network, a global network of secret societies that is driving the direction of human society way beyond presidents and prime ministers. Sure. Well, you know, when you mentioned presidents so, and the Bushes, I mean, you know, the skull and bones and different secret societies have been, you know, spoken about for some time now. Yeah. And, and but 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 there there is a, a whole web of them which interconnect. Uh, and I've talked about this in, uh, in, in, in many interviews and, and in great detail in the books. What I started to realize as I was researching this in the early 1990s, now I'm seeing bombshell information, uh, new revelation, right? OK, and, and I'm thinking that was I was writing about that in about 1995. You know, um, it, it's, it's it's a lot of this has long been researched and is now being regurgitated and called um uh, the 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 latest revelation and what that's doing of course he's holding the line in this barricade instead of moving on i was looking at the um the, the way that this global cult worked but then i started to realize that these famous now billionaire people who were uh, these cultists who were running this cult although the the real people in control are always in the shadows they were taking part in satanic ritual um, and uh, human sacrifice ritual. And I came across all this in, in detail in the 1990s, met wow. lots of people that um, had taken part in them, often against their will. Wow. Um, and so um, the, the question then was, well, what are they doing sacrifice rituals for? 
Yeah. Exactly. And then the penny, the, then the pennies start to drop and the dots start to connect. You go back to the ancient world and you see that they were doing sacrifice rituals all over the, the planet in the different cultures to the gods. Um, and then there came a point where uh, humans, most of them anyway, uh, reached a point of maturity where they weren't having that anymore. So it went underground and into secrecy, what we now call Satanism. You, you, you then start to realize that these gods actually exist. They're not gods at all, bunch of prats, but they're perceived as gods by these people who worship them. Who are these gods? And you realize that the gods, quote, that these people today, these cultists today, many famous uh, people are doing these rituals to, these sacrificial rituals to, are also uh, the same gods that the ancients were doing rituals to. So who are these gods? And, you know, when you, you, you really, really want to get to the bottom of what's going on, you have to research so many different subjects. Mm. There's no good researching the history of the Republican Party or the Democrat Party. You've got to, you've got to go much deeper into the nature of reality itself. A, a big thing that um, I think every child should be uh, taught uh, at the first moment they're able to grasp it is that when you look through your eyes you're n into the space that you appear to be looking at, you're not seeing everything in that space. You're only seeing a tiny, tiny band of frequency called visible light. And how tiny is that? Um, if you take um, the, the electromagnetic spectrum, which is basically um, uh, human reality, experience reality, According to mainstream science, um, that is only 0.005% of what exists in the universe in terms of energy and all its forms. And visible light is a fraction, a fraction of the 0.005%. So first of all, why I say children need to know that at the earliest age possible is because that changes everything. Now you can uh, understand that there are whole worlds realities mm. that are happening in the same space that you are operating in but in different frequency bands so that you are not affected by them and you cannot see them you are affected when those frequency bands are very very close and can interact but but the 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 the, the, the higher frequency bands well they're way beyond human perception immediately you start to understand how people can see a, a craft or an entity appear out of nowhere and disappear into nowhere. Because what they're not, they've not appeared out of nowhere and disappeared into nowhere. So that you know, people in five sense reality go, that's ridiculous, that's impossible. They've entered visible light, and to you, they have appeared out of nowhere. And they've left visible light, and to you, they've disappeared into nowhere. Um, it's all about uh frequency so suddenly when people have said to me over the years well well with the, you say these non-human entities manipulating human society where are they then why can't we see them well the answer is you can hardly see anything mate <laughs> because they operate outside not far outside actually of human uh perception mm. and so what they're doing with these rituals is they're interacting with these um, uh, entities they perceive as uh, their gods. I've talked to people who've taken part in these uh, rituals who have described how um, these entities, often reptilian, but not um, always in nature, but absolutely non-human, have appeared in these rituals. They've, they're, because of the energetic match environment that has been created by the ritual the, the the satanists of today like the the ancients they do these rituals in the same place over and over and over again and what this does is thin out the vibrational frequency difference between the two dimensions it makes it easier to to slip into this one albeit uh, uh, briefly sure i mean even when you look at ancient places in the world they're stacked on top of each other positive or negative, probably then. Like churches get, you go to ancient Egypt or you go to different places on the planet and they 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 build on top of each other, like as if that location matters. Back in the 1990s, I um, 
was invited by the guy who was producing it to go to Canterbury Cathedral in England, uh, a, a major uh, British cathedral, which goes way, 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 way back. It's because he was putting on something called a passion play. It's basically the Jesus story, but, but it's played out in cathedrals. After the cathedral closed to visitors, before the, uh, the, the production started, I had free reign of the place and I was walking around. And what they were doing at that time is they were excavating. They were doing um, repairs and, and what have you. And they were excavating deep in the cathedral uh, mm -hmm. under the floor. And what they found was a pagan site, a pagan site on that site. Yeah. And what, what happened um, during uh, the uh, replacement of the, 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 the pagan belief system to, uh, to the Christian one? Well, it's one of two things. Um, some people put their churches and their cathedrals on these pagan sites because they wanted to uh, suppress the, the, the pagan energy. And others did it, the ones in the know. They put it on these sites because they knew they were, they were energetic vortex sites. For sure. Uh, and what, a, what, a, what these powerful vortexes do is as they spin, they are basically um, thinning out and bringing together um, different uh, di different dimensions. This one and one right next to it, called, called they call the astral. It, they're, they're kind of uh, they're, they're spinning them into a to, to a point where they don't quite fuse, but but you know what I mean. And that's why they uh, they do these um, satanic rituals um, at these vortex points. Mm. And, and for this reason, uh, ch churches and cathedrals across the world are built on these points. Wow. Um, and and this is this is the reason that 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 um, uh, satanists do so much of their uh, her horrific uh, ritual uh, in relation to churchyards and churches and stuff. Uh, it's because what are uh, these rituals? I'm I'm curious what you've heard firsthand from people. Right. Well, um, th this this will um, uh, this will explain a lot. Um, one of the th things that I realized just after the turn of the millennium is that this reality is actually a simulation. It's a uh, a incredibly advanced version of um, a virtual reality game, and I, I can. I, I got that download myself in an experience. I uh, I was sort of shown in a psilocybin experience that, like, I went so far away that the way I had to come back, the first construct that I had to agree to was the mind. That was the matrix. Yeah, and I had to buy yes. in. I had to well, forget, and I had to buy in. That is um, uh, something I go into in the reveal, mm. some detail, uh, uh, quoting people who've um, had the experience that yeah. you, you talk about and, and other experiences relating to that. Uh, so I realize this is a simulation and, you know, I can talk um, ab about how it works. It's, it's very s simple to explain how it works. Let's finish up with that because I think the real ending is like, what do you do? So I'd love for you at the end to explain what the matrix is and how we do it. So, but after. Yeah. The question was, why the simulation? Mm. Why? Why yeah. would they create a simulation to, to hoodwink um, our perception of the very reality we're experiencing? Why would they do that? What's the point? Yeah. And this, this relates to what I've just been saying about the rituals and why they do them is the same thing. There's two types of, of, of consciousness, if you like, projection or experience um, that leaves the body. There's what they call near-death experiences where the body dies and, and you find yourself in another reality. And there's, with the body still alive, the ability to project your consciousness into this astral dimension that interpenetrates right. this one, like, mm -hmm. like radio stations uh, and, and TV stations. One of the people that popularized these out-of-body experiences was a guy called Robert Monroe. And uh, he became very skilled at it. And to such an extent that the CIA got interested and mm -hmm. put mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. a group of people that could... Uh, project their consciousness in this way into the astral and and perceive and and experience the astral as a result 
and uh, along with Munro, and uh, they called it the Gateway Process or the Gateway Project. Is this remote viewing? Is this some of this the remote oh, viewing it, stuff that the CIA it, it, used? It, it's beyond me re remote viewing, actually. And uh, interestingly, what they found was they they developed this. Uh, Munro developed this concept of what he called hemisync or hemisphere of the brain synchronization. Hmm. That if you could synchronize the two hemispheres of the brain. Uh, it into a a uh, coherent frequency, then it was possible to to no. project your consciousness out into the astral. Well, first of all, um, in this gateway project, and this has come from uh, military sources that um, that were involved in it, hmm. they saw so many reptilian entities in the astral. These uh, people taking part in this gateway project. Um, that they gave them the name of the alligators in the project. Have you seen any alligators? Uh, and the other thing that uh, um, Robert Monroe uh, said he learned in his astral travels was that um, there are entities in the astral which are feeding off low vibrational human emotion and, and mental uh, energy frequencies. Uh, it's long been known by mainstream science that every time we feel an emotion or have a thought, we generate and project a frequency which relates to the nature of the thought or the emotion. Sure. And these sense. these entities, by their very nature, are in a very low vibrational state and have no interest whatsoever in um, in in joy and happiness mm -hmm. and peace. Uh, and love, because those frequencies are high frequencies, and they can't absorb them. Because what, what he what he learned, and and I've uh, by the time I I read his stuff, I'd got this from many other sources before. Mm -hmm. Confirmation is that these entities are feeding off as a uh, an, an energetic sustenance source human low vibrational emotion, which which mm -hmm. um, has to be low vibrational because. Yeah, that's the, the the frequency band they operate in. Right, Anything right. Well, you think about frequency it. in any frequency in any way, you know that the higher the frequency, the le the low just doesn't resonate with it at all. It shatters glass. Like it's yeah. It's well, ex exactly. And and so um, these entities have created this, and it goes beyond these entities. Actually, that's another story, another time. But um, they have created this uh, quote matrix, this simulation to. Um, Oh. to manipulate events perceptions perceptions of events perceptions of 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 experience so that it generates this low vibrational energy which yeah. they feed off now yeah. what i realized um in these sacrificial rituals because you 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 are you're asking the question obviously you've got to keep asking questions all the time yeah with, with without any belief system to 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 censor you. Oh, I can't go there. My belief system will be wrong if I go there. No, ask the question. These uh, sacrifices to the gods. Okay, so what do the gods get out of it? And 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 it's exactly what I'm describing. What's happening in these uh, sacrificial rituals is they're they're designed purposely to build up maximum terror in the victim. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and 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 as this terror is generated by the victim this very intense powerful low vibrational energy these entities um in the in the in the astral are, are feeding off that energy because you know um if someone's having an emotional experience mm -hmm. an emotional reaction or they're thinking something you can see the body language especially oh, emotional yeah. You can see the yeah. body language. Some of, of us of, wear it on our face. Some of us, some of yeah. some of our energies are very strong, and it's very easy to sense. So, absolutely, we can all relate to that. But what you can't see are the frequencies coming off people, because that's that's an astral phenomenon. That's going into the astral. Those uh, low vibrational frequencies, and therefore, there these these entities, the gods in the astral, are feeding off this uh, this this energy, and at the same time when um when when the terror reaches a certain level a a, a, a massive infusion of adrenaline goes into the blood mm -hmm. and these these uh, satanists conducting the ritual in our reality 
then drink the blood. This is where adrenal adrenal trauma, all this stuff comes from. Yeah. And so So, it's usually with children, right? Yeah, it's usually with children. I mean, when they talked about sacrificing young virgins to the gods, that's just um, code for children. Uh, huh. There's why there's some, chil- why why children? Well, because there's a uh, you know when 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 uh, children go through puberty, we um, see that in this human reality as a chemical transition, a chemical transformation. Uh, we call it you know, puberty. Uh, that chemical transformation, like everything in um, in our human reality, is an expression of a vibrational transformation. And these uh, um, entities want that energy before that transformation. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, of course, they can take energy from 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 adults, yeah. of course, and they do. But I mean, that's the nectar to them. That's that's mm-hmm. the ideal for them uh, uh, that they want that. Uh, prepubescent energy um, of children, uh, and uh, so uh, and there's 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 many other reasons for it as well, but that's one of them. So so I'm clear. So the sacrifice is to attract the god, the the energy that they want to come into the space, and then the the consumption of the blood of the adrenal chrome from the adre- adrenaline going into the blood is then what's consumed by the group that's there. Yeah, but yeah, that that's that's the difference. But they, both 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 are the result of terror, which yeah. they generate in the ritual. Yeah, and you know, this is what I say to people. You know, uh, it's been very difficult to get over, and I don't understand it because most people don't come across this stuff in everyday life. No. But it's very difficult to get across to people the scale of pure evil that we're dealing with. And I call evil the the, uh, the absence of love. Uh, and these people have, these entities have no interest in, in love. It's not, 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 it's not an, an energy that they can, they can absorb because they're, they're way out of the frequency of that. You have this matrix set up to generate this energy. That's why, you know, look through human history. It's war and suffering. Yeah. Hunger and oh dear. I'm wondering how this makes them more powerful. What does this how does this make those 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 people more powerful? Well, it, it empowers them energetically. What what you know what you know what I talked earlier about uh politics is about getting uh the collective uh humanity to give its power away to an individual or a few to to dictate events for the next four years, five years in some mm-hmm. countries. Well, it's the same thing. They are leeching, vampiring your energy, and it's empowering them. And then they recycle that back against you in mm-hmm. terms of of control and what they uh, what they do. When I uh, was looking at this um, this simulated reality, obviously, I wanted to know how it worked. What what makes it easier to um, explain? is that this incredible um, technological revolution, AI revolution that's going on, computer revolution, is actually technologically mimicking the very way we create the simulation and interact with it. So it's you've got the tools now. I mean, you know, my heart goes out to the shamans of the past and people like that who may have got this stuff uh, by their um, their astral uh, travels or whatever, and then then trying to explain it to a, uh, I mean, how, how do you explain this stuff to a, right. to well, a cult- culture that knows nothing uh, uh, so about true. any of this stuff? So, it's so true. So what, what they were doing was using analogies that related to the culture of the time. And... Uh, anthropologists and historians go along and they uh, they then take it bloody literally and uh, think that these people were primitive. But actually, they were symbolically describing something which we now can very closely describe very accurately. Mm-hmm. So, uh, OK, what the simulation is, is not a construct. It's an information field. Uh, It's akin to a Wi-Fi field. We interact with it through the human 
body, the biological computer, and we lock into it via the five senses. So if you look at a Wi-Fi field and a computer, uh, the Wi-Fi field contains all the information. The computer locks in to that part of it that it is keyed to uh, connect with, and then it decodes that um, information field into what we see on the screen. And what we see on the screen is absolutely nothing like that information uh, in, in the Wi-Fi field, in the form it's in the Wi-Fi field. Right. It's been decoded. Right. And so when you say to people, tell me about the Internet, and they say, uh, well, it's, um, it's videos and, and, and texts and stuff and all the rest of it. Well, yes, it is. But the only place it exists in that form is on the screen. Oh, yeah. And then, and think then about a are, telephone. It's not like the words are travel. I mean, you talk on a telephone. That's just vibration. It's just, just vibration. Connection. It's vibration. Well, this is interesting. Um, it's vibration that that is turned into an electrical signal. Well, that is exactly what we're doing. If you look at a headset, a uh, virtual reality headset, that's basically what the body is doing. The body is decoding mm -hmm. the simulation. So um, if you go onto the internet and you look at these compilations of people who've put the headset on and you see that their sense of reality is transformed almost immediately. It might be in an empty room. They might be in a room with a few friends, but it's a, it's a, a room they used to. Right. And so well, and it's a fully embodied experience. For me, it's when you have a fully embodied experience, whether it's through plant medicine or an emotion or something significant that happens in your life, fully embodied, you, you can't unknow it. But if you, if you look at what these headsets, if you um, look what they're doing, they're tapping into the five senses. They're, they're, they're tapping into the sight senses, the, the sound senses, and all that stuff. And they are uh, overriding the normal reality that we uh, would experience. And they're falling off their chairs. They're screaming. They're shouting yeah. because their sense of reality has been overridden. Sure. They have an emotion and they send the frequency. It's a whole thing. Yeah. Overridden in seconds. They can take the headset off. And, and realize it's just a game. But if your headset, your decoding mechanism is your very biological computer body, then you can't take it off short of either dying, the body dying, not you, or projecting your consciousness into the astral. Uh, otherwise, what's happening is the your computer is decoding the Wi-Fi field, the simulation, into the reality that we think we're experiencing, which is nothing like what we're actually experiencing. So again, if you go back to that vibration electrical signal, if you uh, look at what mainstream science talks about in terms of how the five senses work, they're picking up frequency information and they're turning it into electrical information, which they communicate to the brain. And the brain then forms it into what I, I say, and many others uh, say who've studied this, into a, a digital holographic form, which um, is basically a, a 3D holographic version of a, a computer screen. And that's what we um, are experiencing as an external reality when actually it's in here that it's going on. Just as if you look at a computer, you're observing the screen from outside, okay but the decoding is going on inside. The reality actually is inside and you're only seeing uh, a, an external uh, a screen vision of it. What happens in what we call death is uh, that the biological computer ceases to function. So the, as soon as you enter this reality, you are experiencing through the body, the body decoding system is delivering to you a reality that is nothing like actually it really is within this band of frequency in terms of sight sense uh, called visible light. And uh, while you're in the body and you're going through uh, life, it's continuing to deliver that reality, that simulation reality. Your parents have got headsets on, your, 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 your teachers, your professors, 
your mates, the news readers, journalists, politicians, uh, workmates, they've all got headsets on and they're all decoding basically the same reality, basic reality. They perceive it in a different way, depending on them, but their basic reality is the same. And so everyone's confirming to everyone else that all this is real. And it's not. It, it's a, a, a decoded illusion, what I call an induced dream. Mm. And so when you leave, when, when your body ceases to function, death, it ceases to decode the simulation, at which point you find yourself in another reality. Yeah. Why? Because your focus of attention has not moved. What we call death is only a transfer of attention. That's all it is of mm. our consciousness. But then the next question I had was, OK, I can understand why uh, consciousness might be tricked into this simulation once. But you've only got to travel around the world. I've been to 60 uh, odd countries, um, not m most of them in the last um, 35 years. But I can't go to many now because um, I'm banned from loads of them. But uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm banned from 30, nearly 30 European countries and Australia, plus a lot more if I try to get in them. Um, it must be something I'm saying. I do hope so. Fully enough, all those people in the in the uh, center of the the big names in the uh, alternative media, they can travel anywhere, and they're they're still on YouTube. And I'm, I was off YouTube in 2020 when I in April 2020 when I exposed the uh, COVID hoax and um, and what have you. So the you Epstein know, that, list is still clean. So you know, I, I must be saying something uh, different to them uh, to to cause me to have all these. Um, uh, deletions and uh, bans when, when they don't have them uh, and and when we're, we're getting into this whole arena now of 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 what that information is right so i i i, I traveled around the world and the vast majority of people in this world are not having a good time they're having a very bloody hard time they're trying to survive another day um and so um the question i had was i can understand consciousness being tricked manipulated into entering this reality uh, but why do they come back because by this time it was obvious to me that reincarnation was real i go into this in in detail in um in the reveal um you know wh when you you see the evidence of um young kids who i've um described previous lives that they could never have known about in locations they could never have known about uh, with people they could never have known about and and when they i mean been, that's essentially the story of the buddha too that's how they find yeah, yeah but when they've been when no. they've been checked out um the stories they've found to be incredibly accurate in detail yeah. Yeah. there's a story that i tell in the um in the reveal where there was a um a psychiatrist an american canadian psychiatrist called ian stevenson who came across some of this stuff and then made it a life's work, basically. And he uh, studied thousands and thousands of these reports and um, then went and checked them out. And what he was trying to do was debunk them, not, not because he wanted to debunk them, but it, that was his focus. I'm going to do everything I can to debunk this uh, to see if it stands up to scrutiny. And he found extraordinary correlations between what small kids were saying about lives in locations they had no experience of whatsoever. There was one uh, boy who um, said that uh, he was married to this lady who was still alive in this other place. And so they went over to, uh, to check all this out. And, um, the, uh, and he said that the boy was talking to the, 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 the quote, former wife as if she was still his wife. And then uh, the the what the wife said, um, we never found your will. If you're who you said you say you are, we never found your will. Where's the will? And he went over to a to a, a floorboard in the kitchen and pointed at it. And they took the floorboard up, and there was the will. You know, so so and and there's so many of these stories. It's 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 clear to me that reincarnation is real. Right. But what I didn't buy, going Why back, we to come some, back. Yeah, what I didn't buy, is, like I say, some something you mentioned earlier, is that we come here to e to evolve and learn lessons. I think that's total tosh. Hmm. Uh, tell me what lessons the uh, the kids in Gaza are currently learning. It's ludicrous. 
Mm. Or I, I, I've been, um, I've been uh, cut up by a serial killer, I, I, and I, 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 I've been left in a fridge. Oh, it's a great lesson. I, I'm really fantastic. You know, it's, it's ludicrous. What, what all these things do is produce enormous, fantastic amounts of what, um, uh, what Robert Monroe called louche, i.e., this low vibrational, emotional, mental energy. That's what is happening all around us all the time in mm. conflict and war and suffering and bombing and hunger and desperation. Um, and and that, that's, that's the reason to produce this bloody energy. It's not to evolve. I started looking at near-death experiences and there, uh, well, I, I've, I've watched and read enormous numbers yeah. of these near-death experience accounts and they are very, very common in theme. What I found interesting uh, and, uh, is, is talking to people who remember the incarnation process. And again, they're very common in what they say, uh, who somehow have not had the mind wiped like everyone else uh, does as part of coming into the matrix. Because when you come into this field, you have to have your mind white because then you start with a blank sheet of paper. You're bloody yeah. clueless. You don't know who you are, where you are. What, yeah. What, yeah. That's the idea. Because um, because if you were having life after life and you remembered it while you were experiencing a human life, you'd know what was bloody going on. Right, right. So, so um, one of the things that I found interesting is when people are talking about this astral dimension, they talk about it in 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 like physical terms it's it's not the dense physicality that we have but this it's a form of physicality and also how the incarnation process is is very technological i go into this in the book and quote people who who, who, um, mm. who describe this and and one of them talks about how she remembers coming into this reality and passing through a electromagnetic field that was as she entered Oh, yeah, like, yeah, I've heard about that. like the density about, of it, the the coming yeah. down, the density of that, oh. the the physical experience of that. Yeah, the density of this reality, the human reality, um, is described in terms of being almost impossible to um, experience. It's right, so I've heard that too. But also that um, uh, this 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 lady was talking about how she passed through this um, electromagnetic field that is designed to wipe your mind as you come in. It's it's like remember those old um, those old tapes where you used to rub them over a electromagnetic magnet oh, yeah. and and they it would wipe them and you could use them again. That that kind of principle when um, people were talking about when they left the body in a near death experience. They described how it was just amazing, like nothing they'd ever experienced before. Yeah. There was a bliss, a love I'd never experienced before. And you go, well, hold on a minute. You obviously believe in reincarnation. Oh, yeah, yeah. Believe in reincarnation. So why haven't you? What do you mean you've not experienced it before? You must have experienced it loads and loads of times. But because of the mind wipe, when you leave the body, that mind wipe is still in place. And they want you up this tunnel with a light at the end or or a light or however it's symbolized. And of course, we are we are told in the, the world of human uh, uh, to uh, relate the light to to God. Um, and so when we leave, you go to the light and uh, and you're in the wheel of samsara, as the Buddhists talk about um, the reincarnation cycle. And you come back here in another form with a different uh, personality program. And uh, the whole thing keeps uh, happening. And for me, if we talk about uh, what we can do about this, and, you know, th this is the level we need to talk about, not, not whether Trump or Harris is going to be president uh, and you're going to have the hard sell or the soft sell to the same end. Um, this, is, this is the key to human uh, freedom or consciousness freedom in what we call human. Uh, for me, there's three levels um that um that, that that are very different first of all there's the human body which allows us to interact with this dense human reality frequency band um our consciousness is vibrating so fast that 
you know, if, if it was just consciousness and consciousness alone, um, I couldn't tap these keys because they, 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 they're the different frequency. So we take on this outer shell of the same frequency band that we want to interact with, and then I can tap the keys. But my consciousness is what is experiencing that. So then you leave the body and you enter this astral realm. Now, this astral realm um, also requires an outer shell to interact with uh, uh, so that the two can interact. And uh, I say that's what we call the soul. And so this uh, conspiratorial um, matrix group would like you just to believe that there's no life after death and we're just a, a cosmic accident, you know, and, and that's the end of it. That's what they'd like you to believe, ideally. But they know that most people won't. And, and, and so religion talks about a soul and what have you. And, and in many ways, that's preparing you for the, for the, the wheel of samsara. Um, so they're not really bothered if you believe you have a soul because that's still in the matrix because th this is this mm. astral level is part mm. of this simulation mm. it's what people call the spirit world or the the yeah. um the uh, afterlife and what have you but it's still in the matrix uh, and, and i go into this in detail in the reveal there's another level of self-identity that's what it is self-identity in the end which is what i call spirit where you um identify with being pure consciousness, a state of being aware, pure awareness, no form, no, uh, no body, no any of this stuff, but pure consciousness. And the difference between the frequency that you uh, operate at in a human body that believes the five sense world is real and the level that you um, experience at a soul level in the astral afterlife and the frequency you operate at with a a, a um a self-identity of being pure consciousness <laughs> very different aware, completely different yeah first two frequencies will keep you in the matrix right one will keep you here one will keep you in the astral so you come back here the other will take you way out and, 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 and to hell with all this nonsense. It's over. I, I mentioned earlier that if you look back through history, there's a constant common theme where the many look to the few to tell them what to think and tell them what to do. So common. When, when if they just um, collectively refuse to do that, then the few have no power at all. But it's the same if you look at the dynamic between the uh, human experience and the astral experience they're the same in this sense the astral is obviously a lot less dense that's why it feels like heaven a lot compared with this but it's a lot less dense yes but the dynamic is the same so most people in the human life are looking to authority to tell them what to think they're looking to experts, doctors, scientists, tell me what right. to think. Right. And then when you leave the body, not least because this mind wipe is still in place, you listen to these near-death experiences, and, and, and when they leave the body, they, they, they find themselves with spirit guides or religious heroes. If you're a Christian, mm -hmm. you'll see Jesus. <laughs> if you're a, a, a Muslim, you'll see some Islamic hero and what have you, and so on and so forth. You might see um, uh, loved ones. Um, I go into what they really are in, in the uh, reveal. Um, and, and, and basically, because you're in a state of confusion, mind wipe, um, you follow them. And one of the um, common, common, common themes of near-death experience accounts is the life review where they say they, that, that they watch their life played back to them, mm -hmm. while elders, elders, you know, wise men with beards and yeah, um, uh, kind of went through their life with them. Right. Um, and, you know, you hear near-death experiences all the time saying, there's no judgment in the afterlife. 
well, hold on a minute. I've been listening. I've been listening readings of what you said happened, and they're bloody total judgment. What right. they do. That's a get, different level, though. That's a, to get, me. That's a different level. They're getting you to judge yourself. The point I'm making, however, is that as in the human body, people look to authority figures to tell them what to think and what to do and what to believe. In the astral, the same process goes on. On a more tricky level, because it's with the shaman or it's with your father or with a you know loved one. All that stuff, and I explain. I explain in the in the reveal. Uh, how they how, how they do this the whole simulation is run by ai an ai on a level that is way beyond even what we see in the public arena today um and a, a lot of this astral ai is 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 what's coming in to the human frequency band uh hmm. and, and and transforming it and, and um and turning it into a complete ai control system hmm. the, the point the point is though that you can you can get out of all this so long as you change your self-identity from the identities they give you, here it's so uh, you're just a human and you know you're the labels of a human life, that's who you are, and um, or you're subordinate to some judgmental god who loves you, or in the astral, oh well, you're here to learn lessons, and oh yes, oh you've got your karma, and oh you're gonna go back yeah. and pay back your karma, and you know, yeah. all this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's nonsense you know the thing is um it's not a little bit bloody nonsense it's all nonsense the so whole thing is a bloody trick so the way out then right. and 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 we um have the capacity to um to leave the trap so long as we leave the perceptual states that they infuse into us and look at look at it look at a maverick what happens to mavericks in in a in a human life um they are marginalized they they they're strange they're dangerous they're ridiculed yeah because yeah. they are the ones that have started to see it that's why they act differently to the program that everyone else mm -hmm. uh, acts out Right. And the whole thing is to is to control perception. Absolutely. The stadium in which human control and astral control is played out is control of perception. Mm -hmm. And that we to take it back. And we can. Um, yeah. But if we, you know, we've got to stop falling for belief systems. Right. So what's your what's your advice then for people to be able to have more autonomy of their reality and be able to shift their perception and have the opportunity to live a life that is not in that negative downward spiral of frequency where you're being siphoned by outside entities, but where you get over that hump where you start to spiral in a more positive, higher frequency direction. What is the first big step that everyone should take? Well, I think there's one big step. Uh, self identity that's it you know I, I i i've 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 seen all the gurus and the the new age teachers and people like that um and and a lot of them tend to complicate things and make it sound complicated you go on a quest or you do this and you drink green tea i've got nothing no i can't stand green tea but um i've got no problem with people to do that but what i'm saying is it's it's much simpler than that self identity if you identify with the labels of a human life um, that are given to you, then you identify with limitation immediately. You're, 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 you're identifying with the realm of the five senses, uh, the illusory physical, the holographic realm in which virtually everything seems impossible because of the uh, uh, perceived physicality. If you perceive that you are still under the uh control of uh, uh these afterlife uh entities yeah. helping you to evolve well yeah. you are identifying with another level of the trap sure. if you and you can do it in a human body you can do it anytime you can do it now if you want you move your self-identity from the labels of a human life you even move them from 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 the idea of soul the incarnate soul and you you start to not conceptually that's a, just an intellectual exercise you perceive yourself to be and the more you do that the more it, it ingrains into you 
and integrates into you, you perceive yourself to be just consciousness, mm. all consciousness, a, 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 a unique, a unique expression of infinite possibility. That is pure consciousness, pure awareness. Yeah. Everything else is just an experience for that consciousness. It's not you. It's not real. It's what you're experiencing. Uh, and, and, and that takes you into uh, what, what it does is it starts to remove you from the, the drama. Yeah. If, you, if, you, if you look at what keeps you in the matrix, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's drama. So You're right. I mean, this is how I've always looked at politics. Drama. I'm like, oh, it's just, it's just like get the popcorn and watch, man. It's just, it's just distraction. Or like you look at television at night and you see people standing on stage with ridiculous costumes on, and you're just like, oh my God, this is just a distraction. That's exactly right. You know, what happens is instead of being an actor on the stage, you're in the audience just observing it. Yeah. You step back it doesn't mean you don't do what you can my goodness me i can't be accused of not doing that but but you you're you become the observer and and i'll finish on this but um you know there's two types of dream because i say this is an induced dream there's two types of dream there's the dream which you believe is real and that pulls you in emotionally and mentally you can wake up in, in a sweat and say about it okay. but there's another kind of dream i call it lucid dream do they call it um, that um, where you know it's a dream. You're having a dream, but you know it's a dream. And 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 you're observing the dream. You're not caught in it. Yeah. And, and you're not emotionally um, affected by it. And you're not mentally affected by it. You wake up, you say, oh, I've had a very vivid dream, which I knew was a dream when I was having it. And yeah. and, and what happens is, is when you, you move out of this myopia of self-identity and this myopia of, perceiving the world and you start to expand your self-identity then what you're doing uh, uh, as, as a matter of course is you are as your self-identity expands you're expanding deeper and deeper and deeper into this um, infinite uh, uh, realm of consciousness so you're seeing things you're understanding things you're getting insights that you know you never were there yeah like with this tiny little tiny little focal point you widen it out. I, I I think that's incredible advice. And I think for myself, that's been one of the most um, helpful tools as well. And it's not because I set out to do that, but as a byproduct of work, I realized that I could get above the situation, almost like you become more seated in the consciousness as opposed to in like a non-player character, essentially like in it. I call it in it. If you can just get above it and see it as just things happening, then you don't get the charge and you don't, you don't send that energy charge off that they're looking for you to do with the exactly. drama and with everything that pulls you down. You're above it. Your frequency stays high. And essentially, you can then have a have an existence that feels much, much more peaceful. Exactly. Uh, years ago, I, when I was a journalist, I used to wake up in the morning and uh, put the radio on, mm. listen to what the latest news was. Sure. And I'd often fall back to sleep. Mm. And... Um, I would have vivid dreams. Oh, yeah, because it's coming in. And when I woke up, the vivid dream related to the story being run on the radio. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right? Well, they, 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 there's programming. You're, you're always awake. Yeah. But the point is, that was an induced dream. It was an induced yeah. dream, induced by information yeah. that I was getting. Yeah, um, clean up your environment. And that's what the matrix is. It's that's an right. induced dream. Yeah. And we don't have to believe it's real because if we do, the matrix has you. That's right. Wow, David, thank you so much. You're, um, you've been at this for so very long, as you say, 35 years, and uh, I'm grateful for that. And I'm glad that over time, especially in the more recent handful of years, that people like you that have been brave and have and have stood the course are not looked at as being quite so crazy, but absolutely informational. And at the very least, just opening people's minds up to another way of thinking and how we just live to be happier. That's my ultimate goal. So thank you. Thank you. And uh, I, I would just say this to people, finally, um, if if. If a world that's utterly insane doesn't see you as crazy, it's time to ask why. Yeah, well, there's been a lot of crazy things that have happened lately. So 
appropriate to say. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everybody, for listening to the Pretty Intense podcast today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you heard today and you want to hear more, please click on the subscribe button.